Okay, this is Save Jersey here with Assemblyman and Senate candidate in the 2nd District, Vince Palestina. Uh, Assemblyman Palestina, let's talk about the most important issue I think everyone in the state's facing, jobs. I know that uh, you as an Assemblyman have been uh, very uh, aggressive towards uh, trying to create jobs, particularly in the aviation industry. Could you first tell me a little bit about your efforts uh, to really boost the aviation industry here in Atlanta County? Yeah, John Amadeo and I have a number of initiatives. Of course, uh, being uh, from the Atlantic City District, Atlantic City uh, Gaming has been the uh, primary pillar of the economy for many years. Uh, we clearly need to diversify that now as we deal with competition from other states. And so aviation, because of the, the uh, Hughes Technical Center, the airport here, uh, is an area where we see we can diversify the economy, create jobs. And so we have a number of incentives. Uh, that would apply if uh, kids want to go into aviation training, whether through Atlantic Cape Community College or Stockton College. Uh, we're trying to get the state to designate a next-gen liaison, so we'd actually have a state representative uh, to work along with some of these things. And then there are some incentives for businesses who would hire people uh, in aviation-related fields. So we're all trying to uh, entice some of the bigger uh, operators, Boeing, Lockheed, some of those that come to the area so we can create job, aviation-related jobs out in conjunction with the airport and the technical center. Right. Now, I understand in uh, Obama's new stimulus package, there's a proposal for a tax increase on uh, for flights that are uh, basically non-jet, i.e. propeller, which a lot of the flights out of here, of sorry, a lot of the flights in Atlantic County are uh, propeller flights. State, uh, State Senate President Steve Sweeney has come out in favor of this package. You have come out uh, against this tax. Uh, has your opponent uh, said anything about this? No, he hasn't. Uh, he's, you know, he said uh, he supports the Senate President who supports this stuff and uh, well, the President uh, spent a trillion dollars already. It didn't work in terms of dealing with unemployment. Now it wants to spend another 500 million more. Clearly many of us would say, and as I'm out campaigning, if they voted for this president uh, and supported him, everybody is saying we've got to go in a different direction. Uh, so we can't just keep spending money we don't have. And these taxes, you know, in this economy is absolutely the wrong way to go. We need to lower taxes, reduce spending, uh, end this reliance on debt because that's the real way we're going to improve this economy and create jobs. So that's what we have been talking about. Uh, we think we need to go in a fundamentally different direction, no more taxes, stop the spending, stop the debt, and that's how we'll give people confidence again. Okay, great. Uh, speaking about creating jobs, let's talk about the one job your opponent has created, secretary to the mayor of Ventnor. Uh, we keep finding out more and more about the stuff he's done to pad his pension. He lied about uh, being a consultant to Ventnor. He's an employee. Now we found out that in order to get an extra four years on his pension calculation in New Jersey, he's counting a state job from Pennsylvania. Uh, I mean, is there anything this guy won't do to pad his pension? I mean, if you told him that your upcoming debate would count for his pension, do you think he'd stay an extra hour? You know? <laughs> Absolutely. That's yeah. been his record, so I think he would do anything he could. I, I, you know, uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen as much coverage of it, but you know, his pay, the public pension he's already getting, now he's getting over $150,000 a year, two public jobs, and a retirement pension right now. That retirement pension he's already getting is based on uh, being a career politician, mayor, city council, uh, this job in Ventnor where the city clerk said no one else was interviewed, there was no job description, and there was no work product uh, that was produced by him. And then this mysterious purchase of time from some job in Pennsylvania. Now what we have said is, uh, one, start asking, answering the questions that the public now has on this. Everywhere I go now, people asking me, how is he a have been able to gain the system like he has? And he will not step forward and answer those questions. And two, how is it possible somebody like him uh, gets a pension while he's still working two part-time public jobs? It's a retirement pension. It should be for retirement. So he clearly is abusing the system. Clearly we need changes in law to make sure it doesn't happen again. And he is the poster child uh, for bringing these changes about because what he's doing is absolutely wrong. Speaking of those part-time jobs, I know you filed an Oprah request to get information on his rehiring as a uh, as a swim instructor in Atlantic City. He was out for 12 years, got hired, rehired immediately. They treated it as you know 12 individual year leaves of absences, and they gave him like a 50% pay raise, and then a 20% pay raise a year after that. 
you've asked for the documents to, s to find out what's going on here. Last I heard, uh, they've told you uh, no in violation of state law. So what's going on there? Yeah, we've asked a lot of questions, of course, uh, about his mysterious pay increases. As an Atlantic City swim instructor, he left in 1990 to become the mayor at $39,000 a year. When he returned in 2001, they gave him a $25,000 increase to $64,000 a year, and then the following year gave him another $12,000 increase, uh, of course, boosting his teacher pension as well up to $76,000. And then before he went to part-time status with that job, he was up to $95,000 a year to be a swim instructor. And I don't think people have to wonder, as you live in the most unaffordable, highest tax state in the nation, when you think about a $95,000 swim instructor, why it is so unaffordable here. Unfortunately, Atlantic City Board of Ed, despite numerous uh, requests for information, has either not provided it or said that it is missing. So we're still pursuing some of those angles, but uh, we're not very hopeful at this point getting the information, all the information we requested from the Atlantic City Board of Ed. Uh, since you did mention Atlantic City, let's talk about that. Uh, right now, I think HBO has done more to clean up Atlantic City with their uh, Nucky Thompson cleanup than, uh, than uh, Jim Whalen ever did. But he's trying to take credit for the few things that other people have done that have worked. Uh, the Walk, Revel. Uh, despite the fact that he was a, you know, an uh, in the way of these things, once they started to work, he took credit for them. Uh, so, but now we have you, uh, sorry, ah, I apologize, but we had a situation where when the, uh, the new takeover, I guess, of Atlantic City, or the uh, tourism, uh, tourism district, uh, he did a lot of 11th hour shenanigans, you had to undo them. So now that he, that's been done, he's kind of out of the picture, what can we look forward to in Atlantic City? Well, we have to start reinvesting back in the city. Now, he has had leadership positions in Atlantic City since 1982. I was 11 years old when he started his public service in Atlantic City. Uh, he was at eight years council, 12 years as mayor, then assembly, then senate. So he's had over 26 years now in leadership positions related to Atlantic City. And you look at it, uh, and it is unfathomable. We've had 35 years of monopoly, gaining just about billions of dollars for parts of the city to look the way they do. And so what I have said is we're going to reinvest back in the city. We're going to take the CRDA money, we're going to take the per subsidy money, which went out of the area, and we're going to bring that back to Atlantic City. And John Amadeo and I have been successful working along with the governor, uh, making that happen. But we clearly, we got to clean the city up. Uh, we've got to make it safe and get more uniformed officers out on the street. We've got to start marketing it. We've got to start building a city to go along with the casinos. And so that's what uh, you can expect once I am the senator, a focus on reinvestment back into the community, back into the neighborhoods, back into the city. It's the only way that Atlantic City will become a real destination and have the perception that it is clean and safe and have people want to come here. Okay, great. Uh, since we're talking about jobs, uh, let's talk about, I, I read a report that the average state employee in Atlantic County makes $22,000 more than the average private sector worker. Uh, and that even that average state worker makes about half of what Jim Whalen makes. And Jim Whalen recently voted to uh, raise taxes on people just so they could continue that sort of discrepancy between public and private sector pay. Uh, in the, can we get a pledge from you then that you would not vote to raise taxes like Jim Whalen has been advocating for these past few months? Yeah, you're not you would uh, you're not going to see us raise taxes. You've seen our four-year record now. We don't we're not going to raise taxes. Uh, if we're going to improve this economy, we have to stop raising taxes and increasing spending. We got to go in the other direction: less spending, less taxes, less debt. Uh, it's the only way to have private sector job growth. And you've seen the governor now. Uh, increased private sector jobs by $53,000 uh, in 2011. Uh, that type of growth has got to continue. What did we do? We stopped these taxes. We stopped the spending that they had done. We stopped the debt that the Democrats and Trent had done for 10 years. It's the key uh, to really giving people opportunities and creating jobs.